Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Crossing Borders, the Mexican MMA show where we talk about all the action on this side of the border and south of the border. Of course, I'm Mike Ginn, joined as always by Luke's color commentator, Alex Extremo Soto, maybe even better known as a former UFC fighter in the Bantamweight division. But that was so long ago, we just know him from his color commentary now. <laughs> Alex, how you feeling, man? How was your holidays? Hey. Doing great, Mike. Doing great, man. Wow, what a what a break, huh? Long time since we had our our, our the show. I remember the last time we were going to show for December. December, and uh, and I I don't know what happened. I got super busy and I couldn't get to to uh, doing the last show, so I felt really bad. And we had like a fantastic event to talk about that that uh, from that Luke's thirty one that we did. So man, thirty. Uh, now we're back. Luke's 30. Luke's, yeah, excuse Luke's me. 30. We're getting ready to preview 31. So we all we yeah. did was miss a new middleweight champion. We didn't miss much. I know. I know. But isn't that wild? We could honestly, take, we, we could honestly take three hours recapping everything we missed. So we're just going to go ahead and go forward. Start Let's here today. Uh, we got some uh, previewing going on. We're talking about Luke's Fight League 31 coming up on St. Patrick's Day. They love to take over other people's holidays. Uh, so March 17th, uh, Luke's 31 will be in action. But first, Alex, last weekend, I got to get your thoughts on it. Alexa Grasso shocking the world, taking down Valentina. I will say not a shock to me because I did pick her on DraftKings, and I did put a little bit of money on Alexa Grasso. I kind of saw this wow. one coming. Um, I just thought Alexa was time, and I thought Valentina has been kind of getting a little bit complacent. Uh, right okay. time, right person, great person to carry the throne. What are your yeah. thoughts, man? Well, first of all, I mean, it was like it just shocked everyone. I mean, it shocked the world, right? And and uh, now being, uh, you know, Mexicans are taking over the UFC. Number one, right? Three three world champions in the UFC completely own the flyweight division. Man I mean, women. just flip flop, man. Just like complete like takeover. 2021, 2022, 2023 has been really the the uh, the influx of Mexican mixed martial arts. And a lot of that has to do with the stability and the influx of regulations and getting mixed martial arts at a higher level all over Latin America and specifically working with uh, promotions like Luke's Fight League that has really you know, provided a platform, provided a, uh, a learning platform for these fighters. And now well, we're Look at Alexa. Some, who was in her level. corner? Look, look who was in her corner. I was just going to no, say that. Ale uh, Alessandro Costa, former... Uh, Flyweight champion Diego Lopez just competed a couple months ago on Luke's. Her corner was surrounded by Luke's. Surrounded by Luke's. Surrounded by gold. Astic gold, man. Uh, these guys have 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 done it, man. Alberto Tarzan was, was up in the crowd. Yeah, just <laughs> they're they're just doing fantastic job out there. It just shows you now, Alexa Grasso's, you know, really, you know, really moved it up. I gotta say that I was not expecting Alexa. To do as well as she did. I mean, I I was really blown away by her performance and be able to, to step up at that at that moment. And it was the most important fight of her career to step in like that and take down Francesco the way she did. Man, it was it was incredible, man. You know, Shorty, our good friend Shorty Torres, uh, had posted a training picture with her. I guess like six seven years ago, and yeah. you could just see the evolution from there, from the time she was in, in Invicta to, to coming up to the UFC. And she just keeps evolving, 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 and getting better. Honestly, I thought she was good enough to beat Valentina going into this. Uh, the first round, she took it to Valentina. Second and third round, Valentina clearly took over, got her on the ground, did some other things. And then all yeah. of a sudden, Valentina goes for a spinning kick. You know, I, I don't remember which fighter said it online, but they're like, stop doing that spinning shit because <laughs> you keep getting yeah. caught. Like these fighters are so fast, so strong, so quick nowadays. You do that spinning move. If you don't land, you're going to get caught. In this case, a standing, basically rear naked face crank, and eventually yeah. Valentina had to had to tap. Yeah, Valentina like, got caught, man. She got caught slipping. That's what it was, and it just shows you that uh, you know uh, Alexa Grasso was never out of this fight. You know, you know she was she was behind the cards on that one, but she came in and just finished that fight and needed to do what she needed to do. So. You know, it almost kind of, it almost has kind of like the, the very similar aspect of Brandon Moreno of how, you know, he got into that you know, his first against the champ, uh, loses that one on a, I think it was, was it a split decision or was it a draw? I think it might've been a draw actually. The first fight was a draw. Yeah. So then the second time he comes in just 
finishes them. Just adjusted and finishes them really quickly. Then lost the um, third so one. And lost then won the third the one. one. And won the fourth one. So it's been. It's over yeah, now. It's team. over. Davidson's moving up. Davidson's moving up to Banaway. It's Undisputed. Over. Undisputed champ now. So, uh, but yeah, it just shows you the, the, the kind of mentality <laughs> that it takes to be at that kind of level of mixed martial arts, you know, uh, that uh, you're, you know, th- being able to to stick it through and, and, and accomplish it. And that's what Alexa Rasa did. She stayed in the game and she did it. And she had the confidence of her her jujitsu team with and Diego be Lopez. A better person, right? Like, yeah, Diego Lopez. She's just such and, a beautiful person. Yeah, yeah. Same, same, same. Like you got somebody who's so likable, like Brandon Moreno. She does the 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 women's side of things on the commentary for the Spanish for UFC as well. Like it's almost identical, like stories between her and Brandon Moreno coming yeah, up on exactly. both both sides. Underdogs too, man. We love being underdogs. We just love that. And then Yari Rodriguez, we didn't get a chance to talk about that. He took home the interim title against Josh Emmett. He'll be setting up eventually against Volkanovski. We don't know if that'll happen sooner or later. Volkanovski might even be getting a rematch against Islam. So who knows? Well, you're Dana White. You're Dana White talking about that. And it's like, how I'd rather have those guys fight, you know, uh, a different fight before they see each other. Uh, well, specifically here talking about um, uh, Islam, you know, so, you know, We'll, we'll have to see how that all kind of pans out first. But, uh, but yeah, I'd love to see, you know, he's talking about the super fight, of course, with Volskanovsky. It's like Volskanovsky would fight Yair Ray Rodriguez, uh, and then he would go and fight Islam again. So, I mean, that's what I think we do. I think that's the right thing approach to do. I honestly think uh, if Alex wants to fight at 155, drop the title, let Yair be the undisputed champion and defend it. I think it's a bad matchup for a year if Alex comes back down and fights – uh, Rodriguez, I think uh, Volkanovski kind of runs through him. You think I just so? Think, okay. I, I think it's wrestling and, and the stuff Alex does is not really Yari's specialty. If Yari gets in a striking match, he's going to win a lot of those fights. So I thought but, I thought I called it pretty well, stylistically speaking, with um, with uh, Alex and uh, Islam. I thought Islam was going to have trouble with holding him down. I thought he was going to have problems trying to submit him. I don't think he was going to get the submission. I thought it was going to be a um, a long night for Alex, and it kind of was. They, I mean, they they had you know Volkanovski had a lot of really good shots and stuff and and, and great comebacks, but I knew that it was going to end up with Islam controlling the majority of that fight, and it was going to go to decision. Yeah. Um, in the fight, he did fantastic. It actually blew me away of how uh, Volkanovski's ability to to really get get up from those takedowns from the daggies. Um, but the, but you can see the size uh, difference. Yeah, there's a big yeah, there's a size difference, and he did fantastic. Now, I, I, I think stylistically speaking, though, with uh, Yair, I think it's going to be a different story. It's a completely different game. It's on the outside. Yair is really good at, at, at really connecting. He's very precise in his striking. So I, I think he, you know, if it goes down. But you got to remember who Alex trains with. Drag it. You know he's gonna drag it, drag it through, and, and make it a really boring fight. And that's what Volskanovski is gonna have to do. It's gonna turn. You gotta remember who Alex trains with. What, what do you Alex mean? Alex Volkanovski trains with one of the best strikers in the world, in Izzy oh. Adesanya. Yeah, but there's not. So it's not something. Replicate. It's not something he doesn't see. They're different weight classes, though. They're different weight classes. But and they still train bigger. together. Alex walks around at like damn near almost two hundred pounds. Yeah. Well. Okay. Sure. Uh, there are different styles of striking, though. Very, very different. Very different. Uh, I want to understand Dan Hooker, uh, Adesanya, Volkanovski. They all train with each other regularly. So, what we sure. see in the UFC with weight classes, you know, is one thing. But Alex, that's why he wasn't intimidated against going against the bigger, you know, Islam because you're going up against a guy that is bigger, longer, better reach, and yeah. you can see that especially early on. And honestly, let's be real. If that fight went a sixth round. Alex might have stopped that fight and won that fight because Volkanovski yeah. was exhausted. He wasn't yeah. ready. Like the fifth round, he was almost done. Like, You're talking so, about Islam. Islam being yeah, terrible. Islam. Islam Makachev was done in the fifth round, exhaust like cardio wise. Like, exactly. That's one of the things that from those guys, that kind of pace and that kind of pressure. Yeah, it, it does. It does make it so that that cardio is questionable on on Islam, and I think it showed a little bit. If anything, you got to show from that is is that yeah, cardio is not is not on the side of Islam. Only way, only thing I think about the Volkanovski Yair Rodriguez matchup is that the way Volkanovski fought Max Holloway that last time, and the way he just ran through Max Holloway that last time, and the way through Max kind of like dominated Yair, 
like you, you look at those matchups, they're different matchups, different styles, but yeah. it shows that from a taller, lengthier fighter, there is no backup from Alexander Volkanovsky. The kid, the guy's going to come straight for it with you, no matter who he is. That's why he earned so much respect, even in a loss to Islam. Uh, people just appreciated like the little guy still coming up and, and coming close. He didn't win that fight. I don't think it's controversial at all. I think mm-hmm. Islam clearly won the fight, but you know, he hung in there. And then you go back to your normal weight class where you're a bully and you're going through a lot of these guys. And yeah, Yair, like, you know, if, if you look at Yair's like, you know, going up against wrestlers, uh, I'll give you a perfect example. When he went up against Frankie Edgar, you know, a tough, tough wrestler. I mean, Frankie Edgar put him away really fast. And um, that was through, you know, elbows, just taking them on and uh, taking them really, really quickly. It was a TKO. Uh, I mean, it was a doctor stoppage from what I recall. Um, so he wasn't like he's out and out, but um, it was definitely a, um, a fight where you're looking at it. And yeah, definitely that's the wrestler is the, is the Achilles heel of Yair in, in that fight. So it's a very interesting fight. I think stylistically speaking, uh, the the short stature of uh, Volkanovski makes him a prime target for the type of striking that Yair does. We're talking those knees, those it's, those elbows, those those uh very creative strikes is tailor made for him on that kind of body size and and and, and height. But you're right, it's it's how we're gonna do with the with the wrestling. I'll say this about Yair, you know this as many as as anybody else who's been in an MMA gym. Everybody's always evolving. Everybody's always getting better. Uh, Yair could be working on his wrestling every day. We don't know it. We haven't seen it. We haven't had to see it. Against Josh Emmett, he put on a striking clinic. Uh, his best weapon against Josh Emmett was he had good takedown defense, which is a big deal. Um, I look at Yair like the same way I look at uh, in the same category as Brian Ortega and Max Holloway, and I look at what Volkanovski did to them. Like if you look at a track record, that you know Volkanovski's got a good history against fighters like that. However. Game's already always evolving. So maybe Yair is getting better at that, and that could be a problem. I'm definitely hoping they fight in the summer or the fall, and we can we can get an answer to that. I don't really want to see Islam and uh, Alex run it back. I just don't. Maybe in a couple years. Not right now. Okay. All right, all right. Um, and then Brandon Moreno, him. you know he's got Alex Pantoa finally coming up next, so we're finally going to get that fight. Alex has got two wins on him. Yeah, he does. One, I guess one's, on, be really one's unofficial because of the tough house, but you, you know, as a fighter, if you beat a fighter, another fighter, you know, you beat them. It doesn't matter if the record book yes. says it or not. You yep, know, you beat exactly. them. Exactly. Yep. So that 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 boogeyman is in the back of uh, Brandon Moreno's head, definitely. I'm sure, uh, but he's improved a lot, as you've seen. You know, both of them have season. really. Alex Pantoja has been fantastic. He hasn't lost yeah. to anybody. I yeah. mean, I think he lost to Roy Val, maybe. But other than that, he's like been running through everybody. So this is the matchup. Finally get something fresh blood in that flyweight men's division. So, uh, But, Alex, that's recapping that. It's time to get to back to your day job as uh, <laughs> Luke's Fight League color commentary. We'll see you March 17th uh, with Francisco X. Rivera. Uh, call it Luke's 31. Uh, back in action. Uh, where's that fight card going to be down? Where are you flying to for that one? Uh, for this one, I'm going to Mexico City on the 17th. Mexico City, CDMX, yes. I love it uh, there, man. It's my favorite place. That's where you get your cricket tacos. Cricket tacos is there. All kinds of good food. I mean, this every corner in Mexico is incredible, dude. I love it. Uh, big main event, uh, of course. Nono Costa now officially a member of the UFC roster, vacated the flyweight title. Um, fortunately, un- unsuccessful in his UFC debut, but I'm sure he'll get a couple more fights before uh, he he has to make a decision on that. But Luke's Fight League 31. Uh, you got Jorge Martin Calvo or Jorge Calvo Martin. Uh, originally scheduled for an interim title fight a few months back against Kiki Gonzalez. There was a whole bunch of stuff that happened with that. But he's not fighting Kiki Gonzalez this time. This time he's fighting another up and comer, uh, Luis Ivan Rodriguez, uh, officially 2 0, but we know he has more fights than that. And we know he has destroyed both opponents in that Luke's Fight League cage. Yeah, he's definitely made it quite the run at Luke's Fight League since. Uh... All the way since uh, since Luke's uh, 15, he's been you know causing a terror. Alex Villarreal, a guy that we know at Luke's Fight League, uh, Uriel Uribe smashed him through. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, officially Leon. five and zero. I don't know why it said two and zero. Five and zero. Oh, okay, yeah, there you go. He went through Victor Navarro, Emilio Cuellar, which was a banger of a fight. It, it, one of those 
great, great fights that really kind of got everybody talking about him. That was the fight that kind of made it, uh, made him, you know, stick out from the rest of the flyweight division at Luke's Fight League. And now promotions are looking for him and saying, hey, we're going to put you in against Jorge Calvo, one of the most experienced flyweights in the division and two-time contender for the flyweight division. So here, another opportunity for Jorge Calvo. You got to get through that man to get that belt, to get that Aztec, uh, Aztec uh, gold. I think personally, I don't see very many ways that Rodriguez loses his fight. But can Calvo's grappling kind of offset his dynamic striking? Man, I, I Calvo's submission skills are sick, man. Uh, they're sneaky. They're awkward. They're di different. His striking is also weird. It's uh, uncomfortable to watch sometimes even. Uh, he stands straight up. His chin is straight up. And he just stands there, and uh, but he's very effective in his ability to do that, and uh, that's he's what only really five matters. five, but he's so long. He's he's just crazy, man. He's just a weird dude to fight. Uh, just the way he looks and he fights and he hides it very well because he's very consistent in the way he stands. He's very confident in that stance. It works for him. It has worked for him. But if you look down at his stats, man, yeah, uh, majority of fifty six percent of his wins come by via submission, man. That's really his forte. And when we look at uh, El Nino Azteca, man, that kid is tough as they come. He's incredibly, like, uh, just a tough, young, hungry. He's got all of the makings here of a fight like a Mexican kind of fighter, uh, El Nino Azteca. So all of his fights, they all come, uh, you know, he's got some, um, you know, so the, the decisions, you know, and a couple of submissions here and there. But let me tell you, this kid is is willing to die in there and those are the things that we as as fans of the of the show uh really enjoy watching is guys that just don't have any quit in them i think this is really experience versus potential like, agreed might know, be a Cal little early yeah calvo has you know he's traveled the world he's fought in america and titan fc he's fought you know he's from costa rica he's been in mexico he's been in america he's been fighting everywhere 19 professional fights versus five you know, so I think the kid, though, is just such a dynamic force. I think I think it's going to be hard for for Calvo to put up with his uh, offensive pressure. Now, that said, I think Calvo could catch him. But I think this was the same thing we were talking about with the Kiki Gonzalez fight, where Kiki just comes forward the whole time. And could Calvo put up with that pressure? Same thing, except you got a younger, even faster fighter. Um, so Yeah, it's gonna if be I were to... If, if I were to put my money on this one, though, I, I think it's a little early for, for Rodriguez to step in and take a guy with such uh, the amount of experience that uh, that he has against Jorge Calvo. Um, and it's just going to be a rough one. He's 14 and 6, you know, uh, tons of fight experience, very good against high level guys. So I, I think I think I think Jorge Calvo is going to be able to, to, to get a submission win on this fight. If I would I'm gonna have, have, have to go. I'm gonna have to go the other way on you in this one. I think I think it's time okay. for new blood. I think uh, you know Costa held up that division for a long time, put it on his back. I think it's time for a fresh blood to come in there, and I think this kid could put some some energy into that division. You know, a lot of the new because he's only 21, 22 years old. Yeah, young, like he's, very young. He's young yeah, yeah. But he is just like he finished four straight opponents in the first round before he went the distance the last time, and then he went the distance and still looked good in the third round last time. So yeah, lots like, of energy, lots of cardio. Is not a yeah, problem. Uh, this kid's got it all. I really like to see where he's going with this one. Uh, Nino Azteca might be uh, your new champ, but Alex thinks it's going to be Calvo. Let's see. Uh, what do you guys think? Um, Co-main event: Luis Pantero Guerrero, another guy that's been destroying people. He's going against another veteran, Juan Pablo Mendoza. Who you liking that one? Ah oh, man, that's that's a that's a good one in the bantamweight division. Uh, of course, you know, Luis Guerrero is always stepping up, man, and he did a fantastic job in the last yeah, fight. Yeah, three straight Rodriguez. finishes or something like that. Freddy Villegas, he got him knocked out, you know. Uh, let's see. Man, he's just been – he's been tearing it up, man. But he's fought some some really – oh, he's the guy that got the uh, amazing back – spinning back kick heel knockout of Fabian Galvan mm -hmm. back all the way at Luke 6. I mean, it was one of the first fights that I saw it. I was like, Damn, dude, this kid just pulled off an incredible knockout, dude. That that was highlight reel, was highlight reel, has been continued to see it on the highlight reels of Luke's Fight League all the time. Spinning back kick, bam, knockout. So 
man, he is just a super athlete. Is what I like to call these guys that can just just do it crazy. It's ten and three. Um, I, I like him. I think I like uh, I like him for this fight. I think he's gonna take out uh, Mendoza. Will be he'll be bringing him over. Um, you know, and he also has very he has Titan FC experience as well. Uh, but uh, let's see how that pans out. Most of his fight go to decision for for Pablo Mendoza. Uh, I think he's gonna be tough to put away, but I just think the experience uh, of Guerrero is just gonna be the one that's gonna really, really uh, you know stand out in this fight. I think it's tough to say a 34 year old fighter is hitting his prime. But man, Guerrero three straight finishes has been just destroying people, and you know one of those things we missed on that the couple months that we took off. There's a vacancy in that bantamweight division uh, with Marco Beltran deciding to go do other things in life. This this could be a number one contender fight to see who fights for that vacant title later this year. Yeah, I think so. I think that's a very promising one. And, uh, you know, he's, uh, I, like I said, we'll see how this fight pans out. You know, there's still a lot of things to be said. I think I'm waiting for things to settle down. Maybe David Mendoza comes in and, uh, you know, challenges this fight. You know, whoever wins on this card. Uh, it'll be interesting. I think the Bantam well, Mendoza's division, on this card too. Yeah, Mendoza's coming up on that one as well. You know, he's yeah. had uh, Mendoza had some uh, performances here where he's had kind of a struggle um, in, in really uh, having a dominant performance. You know, with him, but uh, you know, nonetheless, is 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 I just still think he's one of the top baddest dudes in, in the bantamweight division, Latin America. Well, I mean, speaking of which, he doesn't have an easy fight either. He's fighting Uriel Casillo, who's one of those guys that we talked about uh, maybe on our last show or the show before that, who is always like, you think he's doing good, and then he loses. And then you think he's doing good, and then he loses. And then he had a huge win on the Contender Series fight, uh, Contender card, and then now he's back on the main card. You know, of course, the the younger brother, cousin of uh, Draco. Um, I'm not sure. Is it brother or cousin? I thought it was brother. Well, the younger brother of uh, Draco Casillo, of course, the flyweight, I mean, uh, lightweight champion, David Mendoza has got his work cut out for him. What happens in this one? Yeah. Ah, man, this is going to be, yeah, this is going to be crazy, man. So David Mendoza, matchup. so wait, you're talking about David Mendoza fighting against uh, Uriel Casillo? Uriel Casillo, Casillo yeah. Man, uh, and both fighters, tons of potential. I, I think David Mendoza takes this fight. Uh, and I think just because the the amount of – I think the grit is going to go towards Mendoza on this one. Uh, I just think he's got more – he's got a higher IQ in, in, in the game uh, than Uriel. I think Uriel is a very tough guy, very athletic, just like his brother. Um, but I think Mendoza has more of an approach here of uh, being able to uh, to finish this fight. So we'll, we'll see how that pans out. But if I were to put my money on, I think I'm going to go on Mendoza for this one. I'll say two things about that. One, Uriel's known for some of his submissions. Uh, he's got like four submission wins. Uh, it takes your back real quick and take an arm bar. You look at Mendoza's last two slip-ups, both of them were when he got caught in a submission, uh, both with uh, Fido Rubio and then uh, Marco Beltran, and even go back before that, Beltran caught him twice in submissions, both with chokes. Yeah, but so, you're talking about two guys with like UFC experience, guys of high level stuff. And the reason he got caught in this is because he was he got caught in he got caught in Marco Beltran's first his traps, his psychological traps inside the cage. True. And then with Rubio, man, he just decided to stand and stand and bang against Rubio, dude. And he got caught. Just pure experience is what really. Uh, got him. It really nipped him in the butt in those two fights. Uh, is, so, that, is that a weakness that you that he wants to just bang with you? Because I, there's it, fighters it, that like Casillo. He trains with killers too. Well, uh, what I'm saying is here is it, not that it was a weakness per se. It's just that he was he fell into two uh, second tier level traps. Right. Um, you know, he was decided to stand and bang. And when you decide to stand and bang, it doesn't. You know, there's just some there's some modifications that you have to do either your foot placement or where you are either up against the cage or where angle you can get when you just adjust slightly within that, that combination, you can just really put the lights out. And I think that's just what happened in that fight. He got dragged into this, into this, uh, into this exchange this wild exchange before like anybody's Mexican. game. But then, but then it wasn't, it was, then it was like, Nope, I got you in a nice, beautiful combination. 
uh, and, you know, and we're not, and I'm not actually shooting wildly, you know, so they, that's, he just got sucked into that. I think he learned from those lessons. And I think, I think David Mendoza takes it to Uriel, Uriel Cosillo on this one. So I think it's going to be a better, I think Mendoza is going to win too, but I think it's going to be a better fight than people think about because not only can Cosillo catch him in a submission, which we've seen him get caught before, he might have also overtrained too because you got a guy who was Mendoza was supposed to fight last month at 30. Um, and his fight got canceled for whatever reason. So he got moved to this card at 31 and a different opponent. And that yeah. can't change. And, and you keep training for another month that can mess you up too. Yeah. So but, there's a lot of things that are going against him, but he's still the more talented fighter. So he should win. Yeah. I, I also think that, yeah, he's not a big 35er. I've met him a few times. He's not, he's not like a, a massive person. So he doesn't have to cut he's, a lot of weight. No, I don't think he's a big, uh, you know, he does a big uh, weight cutter. So I don't think those really take a, a big of a toll as you would imagine. I won't go down the whole card because this is a pretty stacked card. Uh, of course, you guys can check it out on March 17th, all the normal places. But I will uh, ask you about a couple other people. Uh, Cesar uh, Vasquez has been coming up big time. Uh, he's been dominating lately. Uh, what do you think of his fight coming up against Siller? Well, um, man, Siller is uh, one of those guys. That, again, we have uh, – let's see. We saw him fight uh, – Actually, he'll be making his debut, I believe, right? Yeah, uh, he's 13 and 2. He he's got a long career, but the last time he fought uh was in uh, a couple of different uh regional promotions. He's fought for UWC, he's fought for FFC, but I don't think he's ever fought for Luke's now. So he's got a win over Uriel Uribe, you know. He's got a submission win over him uh way back in 2018. That's a while, you know, quite some time ago. He also got uh, knocked out by Kiki Gonzalez. You know, yeah, so I'm looking at his Ivan Hernandez Flores. You know, Alan, you know, he's got some wins here, but I, I I don't not any of these names other than Uriel really stick out for me that I recognize here. Um, so this could be a good opportunity for Paulino to el, el cuete or the firework to come out here and uh you know really make a um you know a, a name for him uh here at uh at Luke's Fight League and see where that ends up with him. But yeah, it at I it's going to be an interesting fight matchup there for, I think, Cesar Chavez, or Cesar, excuse me, um, takes this fight over, and uh, he should be able to win this fight, in my opinion. He's just a very exciting fighter to watch, has a lot of great combinations, and uh, very, very, very well-rounded fighter, uh, which I like to see. So I feel like it'll be a good resume win for him. Yeah, I agree. you got a 13-2 fighter, you, you win that fighter, you move up real quick. Um, same thing with... Uh, you know, Ram Cabello, he's fighting Samoya. Um, another fighter I want to talk to you about. Last time we saw uh, Daniela Villasmel was in that title fight for the vacant title title against Victoria Alba. She came up short in that one. Um, that was almost a year ago to the day. She hasn't fought since March 18th of last year. Wow. Um, she's fighting Fernanda Munoz, who fights in that Tijuana camp with a bunch of killers. Um, she has a 5-2 and two record. She's won five straight. I can't help think this is not a good matchup for Villasmil coming back. Uh, well, they're both from the same country too, which is really interesting. Uh, that's re that, that'll be really uh, cool to see. Um, but uh, yeah, I, let's see. When we're looking at her Ultimate World Challenge, you know, really training down there in Tijuana with all those girls out there. Um, yeah, she did not look uh, very good on the last fight. Um, in, in that championship, does Daniela Vias Mill? She seemed like she was gonna really win that fight. You and I were both calling it for her, uh, but she really fell apart in the ring. Uh, and I think that had a lot to do with her cardio not being up to par. I think maybe she put a lot of muscle weight in that fight. And I mean, you also have to give credit to Alba, fight. who came out with a striking clinic. Alba, yeah, Alba came out and just, uh, yeah, she did fantastic. Knees no and elbows that. and just all that Muay Thai just flying at Vias Mill from different angles. Yeah, but I, again, VS Mill was the one that was really favored to win that fight. Um, so I think she just got exposed in that fight. So it'll be interesting to see these girls coming coming up here. I love it. They're both very young. They they don't have you know tons of experience. Um, so we'll see how this one pans out. Uh, very definitely very interesting matchup here. That we're going to see these girls fight in the uh, flyweight division. It's great to get fresh blood in that division, right? Because. I mean, you basically see Vias Mill, Ellie Rodriguez, and Victoria Alba going like against each other in different formats. And like Vias Mill beat Ellie Rodriguez, but Ellie Rodriguez beat Victoria Alba to become the champ. So, you know, th these three have been kind of like holding this division, getting this division going, Shaka Romo and stuff, 
it's nice to get some fresh blood in there, especially somebody from the Antrim gym, you know, Tijuana in your backyard. You know how they they operate down there. There's a lot of, like, UFC fighters in there. There's a lot of uh, Luke's and UWC fighters in there. So there's a lot of people to train with, a lot of high-level competition. Uh, Viasmo is going to have her work cut, cut out for her. Hopefully, you know, she took that year, got herself right, uh, and trusted her wrestling. Like, the one downfall I've always seen from her is that she can really wrestle, but she wants to stand and strike with you. And it, she sometimes you just have to do what you're good at. And at least mix it up, do different things. But she has to at least be a threat to do the takedown to get people scared of it. And a lot of times I feel like she does the takedowns when she's losing the fight, you know, on the, on the hands. And at that point, you're just desperate. And it's not a real takedown attempt. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, hopefully tights, tights up a wrestling game into the and mix in that in well with MMA. And, and we'll start to see some Daniela via Smil action again. Uh, one last thing I want to talk about on the Challenger sh- show. You got Lobo versus Lobo. Which Lobo wins? <laughs> well, clearly the Lo- Lobo is going to take this one. The Wolf will take this one. <laughs> Who booked that fight? Did Henry book that fight? Who booked that fight? Probably did. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Come on, Henry. Uh, I know you're just having fun with this one. First off, f- really good fighters, first of all. Carlos Rivera and Walter Reyes, both are really good bangers. We've seen them fight in, in Luke's before. Both of them put on a show. Like, but Lobo versus Lobo, at some point he was sitting there like, I don't know who to put in the main event of this challenge. They should fight for keeps. They should fight for keeps, man. Whoever loses has to change their nickname? Yeah. I mean, Lobo really just is another way of saying loco and crazy. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, anybody <laughs> that's fighting can be Lobo. <laughs> I mean. Exactly, so. exactly. Uh, looking at that card, anything else stand out to you before we get out of here today? Uh, the only thing that stands out is the tacos that I'm going to be eating when I get down to Mexico City, man. And the warm weather. It's freezing out here. It's like 60 degrees. Oh, yeah, didn't y'all get like a blizzard or something a couple weeks ago? Huh? Well, didn't y'all get some like snow a couple weeks ago? It was crazy. It was crazy here. Ah. Do you want to know that it's 85 right now in Tampa? Yeah, it's 85. That's, yeah. That's nice. We finally got a cold front coming through next week. I think it's going to drop it down to the 60s for like three or four days. But we've literally been – it's the hottest. I, like I've lived here now almost three years. It's the hottest I remember. Like we've had like one cold week. This entire winter. Must we're be like, nice. Our Must lizards haven't nice. even, our lizards haven't even gone into hibernation. They've just been out all year. They're like, we're good. That's awesome. Uh I almost hit an alligator in the road the other day, too. They're just chilling. That's right. Yeah, I heard some lady got eaten in, by an alligator right over by your neck of the woods, man. First of all, it was across the state. Second of all, every sign says don't walk your damn dogs near the water. She tried to walk her little dog next to the water. Alligator was coming up slowly. I don't know if she thought they were going to play together or what, but she react. She's eighty five, so she reacted slowly to get the alligator out of the way or get the dog out of the way. Alligator's yeah. like, all right, cool. I can't take the dog. I'll take you. Yep, yep. And that's crazy though. That's crazy that there's those things out there in the water, man. I've been to Florida, and though you got like little creeks everywhere, you know, and every I just imagine that there's a giant alligator waiting for me there. So. Look, I'll tell you a secret. Do you want to know how to know there's alligator in the water? How do you know? If you put your hand in the water and it comes back and it's wet, there's an alligator in the water. Okay, so there's an alligator in there. Yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go for a little nice walks at the park because I could get killed. In- First of all, people in Florida are crazy. They'll go swimming with them, they'll go jumping in lakes and shit like there's nothing there. And I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with y'all? It's crazy. It's crazy. Excuse yeah, me, YouTube. You know, I, did, I waited past the eight seconds to curse. Here in San Diego, here in San Diego, there's none of that. Nothing here will kill you. Really? Because the ground can swallow you whole. That's not true. Really? You never the had San an earthquake Andreas, in San Diego. The San Andreas Fault is like way east, and it goes all the way past LA. So you never and felt earthquake. San Francisco. So yeah, maybe up there they have earthquakes. We had we very the last earthquake I felt was the Easter earthquake, which was like still the earthquake was still far east, and we just felt it over here. <sighs> San Diego is just perfect, huh? It's perfect, man. I'm sorry. Except, it's for, all, a except for all the Mexican drug cartels. Uh, they're down in Mexico. So, <laughs> yeah, where are they in the United States to, yeah. to transport? <laughs> you have to worry about all the drug, all the drugs that people are taking around here, probably. But the, the I've cartels been, are look, down I've south. I've been to San Diego. I'm not going to like get any like mafias after you me. Want but any, the, but the not, Mexican mafia is not exactly hidden in San Diego. What are you talking about? There's, There's no some places up in the hills here. and east of, of the downtown. You probably There's don't want to go to. 
They're not Mission, here. You know, Mission Vallejo. Ah, nah. They want the drugs as far away from San Diego as they can. Why well, are they afraid of the Air Force? No, the they Navy. just want to go. They want to go out north somewhere, probably to Florida, to go get them all the drugs to, to the Floridians. Hey, we're making a killing when it washes up shore, and we can then turn around and resell it. It's great. <laughs> You're gonna get me killed. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I'm the only one that travels out there, so here we go. Yeah, I mean, I haven't heard Luke's call me for any job, so I'm good. Okay, all right, all right. Maybe the next one. Maybe on the next one. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> I got some other travel. Well, first of all, my wife still won't let me go without her, so. Here she, go. I was like, can I go down there for work? She's like, no. She's like, I got to go. And I'm like, I don't want you to go. I got to go for work. It's not a pleasure. Alex doesn't take his wife with her. I was like, it's work. It's work. She's like. She's like, I don't trust you. I don't trust you. You gotta go. I gotta go. I got you gotta take me with you. I'm like, that's not how that works. They don't pay for two people, they pay for one. Right. Anyway, Luke's, I'm still available. Call me. I'll sneak out the back door. Uh <laughs> uh, Alex, you got a great show coming up on March 17th, St. Patrick's Day. Um, I will tell people this real quick because I watch it on Fox Deportes. Usually it comes on later that night or a couple days later. Just be warned, Luke's Fight League could actually air on Sunday or even Monday after the show on Fox Deportes. So if you miss it on UFC Fight Pass, go watch it on Fox Deportes. Great show. Actually has Henry and all those guys calling the fight in Spanish. Um, it's still a great show. You don't have to listen to Alex ramble on. You don't have to listen to any of the nonsense. You get straight <laughs> to the action. Those guys call the action. It's exciting. It's like watching a soccer match. They're like all super into it. The only thing you're missing is the goal. Cause they're like, knock out! Like they're like they're crazy. It's it's fantastic if you've never watched it. I'm telling you, it's fantastic. But if you're on UFC Fight, Fight Pass, go ahead and watch Alex and Francisco. They do a pretty good job too. Thanks. Um, Thanks Mike. Any final words before we get out of here, Alex? Uh not that's it. It's good to be back. All right, we'll see y'all in a couple weeks after uh, this next show, and we'll recap it and, and keep on rolling. So leave a comment. Let us know what you want to see. This is Crossing Borders. I'm Mike Ginn. That's Extremo Alex Soto. We'll see y'all soon.